This is the summer of 1966, where Brad, Bruce, age 17 and a half, and Glenn, age 15, took their new station wagon, stuffed it with a couple of used bicycles, and on top, put tied their new sailing canoe and headed west. They followed the old Oregon Trail for a ways. They camped at Old Fort Kearney. They went, got to Independence Rock, where we had been the year before, climbed the rock, slept out on top of the rock, and next drove further west in Montana to the Rosebud Indian Reservation where a friend of a friend of Bruce's was there on the Rosebud Indian Reservation as a Vista volunteer helping out the Indians. We gave the Indians the bicycles as a gift and mixed with the Indians and enjoyed their company. This first picture is one of the girls at Rosebun. It is a quick shot of Glenn here on the Rosebud Reservation. That's a picture of the uh, Vista volunteer, a friend of a friend of Bruce's. A sunset shot of the sky at Rosebud. Here we are at a dock on the Missouri River just below Great Falls where we can put our canoe in with the sailing, with the sail tucked away and enough groceries. Our friend takes a picture ready to start out on the Missouri River. Here we are out on the river. We're going to go for six days. The river is wide and a few ripples, but not very rough really. And the wind is with us most of the time. Here we stop to make camp on the south side of the river. Here's our sailing canoe ready for campground. All tucked up. All our, all our stuff tucked away, ready to go. Here are some of the cliffs on the uh, south side of the river. Here we are, ready to go. Quick smile. A little piece of driftwood in the middle of the river. A bunch of antlers strung on a pole. We saw several of these old, very old, half broken down, apparently abandoned huts by on the north edge of the river. We stopped and took a look at it. We also checked out our map. We have six days to go. We're going to end up at something called the Robinson Bridge, Route 89, six days from here. We saw some wildlife. He was interested, as much interested in us as we were with him. So he just lay down and looked at us. Here's a dead cow floating in the river. Some other of these cliffs, these are on the south side of the river. Quite significant, very beautiful cliffs right at the edge of the river. Again, these cliffs, quite spectacular. A few more. 
and some more. Some more cliffs on the south side of the river. We parked the canoe and took a hike. Taking a quick look. Interesting reflection in the water. Quite a, shows here that the river is really quite smooth, very easy for the canoeing. Another pinnacle right next to the water. Here's our campsite with a uh, canvas strip held up with poles and ropes and some of our stuff laid out on the grass beside it. I guess we expected some rain. Have some breakfast. Some of our campsites have got a little muddy as we got out of the water onto the shore. A little shot of blend. Taking a quick look at the map. This pole is important. The Boy Scouts of this area had gone down the river some years or months be before us, and they have posted at the river with an iron post a spot where the Lewis and Clark expedition stopped. They had the diaries with them, so this pole, which is usually painted yellow, We'll see some others later. Was an actual Lewis and Clark campsite. And we had the diaries with us so that we could match the diaries, the campsite from the diary, from the campsite where we were actually camped. This is the Lotsey Ferry, an actual ferry boat serving the people who worked on who lived on both sides of the river. The ferry was tied to a cable. You can see the cable there. And uh, it paddled across the river, bringing people, maybe even a car, across the river. It's called the Lotsey Ferry. There's the ferry. Very large piece of equipment going from side to side across the river. Here's another one of the posts indicating a Lewis and Clark campground. Again, what we would do would be to stop there, often camping that night, and reading from the Lewis and Clark diaries, which were written at the very spot where that post was put and where we were camping, reading the Lewis and Clark diaries, which came from just that very spot. Ready to take off again. We, we would use the sail only when the wind was with us. If not, we would just tuck it down. Here we're purifying our water by putting it through a net, and we also may have boiled it before we drank it. Another Lewis and Clark campsite post. We really felt close to history when we see these posts and read the Lewis and Clark diaries from the very spot where we then stood and camped.
when the wind was with us, we put up that sail, and you can get an idea of the speed that canoe was going when the wind was behind us. Another piece of driftwood, and you can see part of the sail that we have already have put up. More of those uh, pinnacles on the south uh, north side. Shows the sail. Taking up the wind. Checking the Lewis and Flack diaries. Climbing up to the cliff to one side, we get a more of a distant view of the river itself and one of its curves. Another one of these quite beautiful pinnacles on the north side. We've climbed up one of those rocky walls and look down at the river below us. Climbed up fairly high so we're going to get a good view of the river. And whenever we felt like it, we take a swim and reshake the maps. The speed coming off the prow. Still another example of the pipes showing where Lewis and Clark camped. And still another. Dock the canoe briefly for rest, maybe a first swim. Preparing dinner.
pancakes for breakfast. Ready to take off the next morning. You notice we hit a good rudder on this canoe, as well as the sail. Another Lewis and Flat post. Another one of these rickety, rackety, semi abandoned huts by the side. Cats is growing on the roof. Parts of an old wheel. We brought one of these home and we have it here at our home in Pemberton Street. An old piece of farm equipment. Here the sail is up and we're moving along with the wind. Another little dip to cool off. Still another of those yellow posts. We felt very thankful to the Boy Scouts who had done this project with these uh, yellow painted posts. Designated the Lewis and Clark campsites. Now we've arrived at the Robinson Bridge, which shows the end of our trip. We take out the canoe at this point and unpack it. All cleaned out and ready to put on our friends, meet us with their car, so we're ready to put it away. It's been a great six days. That's our gear. This is the label on the Robinson Bridge, Route 89, which crosses the crosses the Missouri at this point.
So here's where we disembark. That's our friend's car. That was a great six days. Driving back, we ha happened to see this fenced area and this sign. This is a site of an ICBM missile, which is, is it's an underground site. And this is the top of it that we passed by. Obviously, we, we didn't go in there. That would have been a breach of security. That's the missile site. Way down below there, there are men and women of the Air Force on duty in case the President should call them.